we are on week number 11, Dr. Liz, and she comes up for the first five minutes. Let's give her a hand. It's sufficient for us to know that the laws of God, the instruction of the Lord. Yes. A lot of people get messed up with um, the law of sin and death is the law that Jesus abolished. Mm -hmm. So that's no more. Mm -hmm. We are free from that because of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the instruction of the Lord is still uh, in effect. And that is his word to us. Mm -hmm. He gave his laws because he loves us. Mm -hmm. It's just like when we have rules for kids in our home, yeah. for our children, because we want them to take care of themselves. We yes. want to take care of themselves, uh, to the, of them. And so we give them uh, laws or rules to live by and that's how these laws of the kingdom are applied to us but because we have the Holy Spirit they are being written in our heart every yes. day until we become fully mature in the Lord but let me say this the laws of the kingdom are simply defined as anything God says for man to do in the garden there was a law. God gave Adam a law. Because anything that God says to do or not to do becomes law to us. You know, even when he speaks to us prophetically uh, to our lives, that's why the laws are written in our heart so that we will know what to do. Because let's say that God gives us a word about us doing something for somebody mm. or not doing something to somebody, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. it, it, the guide that we have or the, uh, the measurement that we have on that is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. When we hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us about a particular thing of subject to do or not to do, we, we measure it up just automatically, we weigh it, with the word of God, because we because the laws are written in our heart, right? So therefore, we know when he's speaking and when it's his yes. word. So if God tells us prophetically something inside of us to do or not to do, then that becomes law to us when he answers. Amen. Amen. So we got to realize that the law is more than just a set of rules, which he intended for our good anyway. But it is more than that. It's his love to us expressed in a way where he is speaking to us yeah. every day. So that becomes law. Um, there's a lot of things I want to say here, but let me just uh, go into just one scripture because uh, Paul tells us in Timothy, 1 Timothy 1, 8 through 11, and I'll close with this. But we know that the law is good. This is Paul speaking. If one uses it lawfully, that means as we have received it from God in our hearts, realizing the fact that the law is not made for the righteous men, but for those who are lawless and rebellious. <laughs> it is for us to measure by. So we know it's not for us, but the actual uh, instruction of God is what we get from God so that we won't get into any of these yeah, problems. That's right. <laughs> okay? That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's Amen. all I've got. That's good. Amen. <laughs> all right. Thanks. We're going to talk about the person of purpose. The person of purpose. Who you are. Do you know who you are? Literally, we're going to talk about your kingdom name. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's get started. And we prayed before the class and we were anointed. Hallelujah. We shared on purpose. Week two was protocol. Week three was the path. Week four was your prophetic mystery on kingdom purpose. Then next was power and authority. Next was passion. Next was perfection. Then we had promotion. Then we talked about prayer, and tonight we're going to be talking about our person. Who are you? And a lot of times we feel like we're a collection of all the people we've ever known. 
But you actually have an identity that is unique as your thumbprint, your fingerprint. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. The name of Jesus Christ, and again, I'm, I'm looking on this sheet that we've prepared for you that you can get at our website. The name of Jesus Christ declares his nature. When we talk about your person, we're going to be talking about who am I? Literally, we're going to be talking about your kingdom name. How God calls you. Wow. The name of Jesus Christ declares his nature. As he is called these things, and you've read this, he's called I am. Did you know that's a name? Yes. And it's all in caps. Because I am that I am. He literally is the word of the creative nature of God. So, the name of Jesus Christ declares his nature. He's called I Am. He's actually called capital W, Wonderful. Mm -hmm. He's not just saying he is wonderful, and he is. That's his name. But he's saying that's his name. He is Counselor, capital C. He is the Prince of Peace, capital P. He is the King of Kings. That's his name, capital K. And the word, capital W, of God. That's why it's important that you know you, your name. As it describes who you are. Because a lot of us have suffered identity theft. And I just, don't just mean in your wallet. <laughs> right. I mean, a lot of people walking around as copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. And God wants us to know who He designed us to be. Everybody say amen. 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 We've got to understand that at the name of Jesus, not just because there's something mystical about the name Jesus, but it's what the name represents. It's not Jesus and His last name is Christ. <laughs> no. Right. But it's Jesus the Messiah. His name, at his name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But who am I in this? My identity in the kingdom. We couldn't cover this overview of the specifics we'll be getting into later without covering this. If you don't know who you are, you will definitely try to be somebody else. We need to know at some point, though, who am I? Uh, and a lot of people have had their identity stolen. The thief comes not but for to, John 10.10, 10, to kill, to steal. kill your purpose, to purpose. steal your identity, and destroy your destiny. <laughs> So write some of these things down and, and understand that it's vitally important that you know who you are. Yet, you will see some of you in others that are walking with God. A mentor, a, a mentor that's worth their salt, never wants you to become them. You, they know you will copy them for a while because when you look at them, you see some of you. That's what makes a mentor. It's really, uh, it's a dynamic that only God does. You can't just say, I'm your mentor. Usually, the student will tell the mentor that they are their mentor. The mentor doesn't tell the student. Because the student recognizes who they're looking at. Because the student sees something about themselves in that mentor. And the mentor who's worth their salt does not try to display him or herself. They try to display the heart of the father. Matthew 22 and 14 says, For many are called, but few are chosen. So let's look at what that means. Because a lot of people might say already, Well, then I'm probably not going to be chosen because, you know, I, I think a little of myself. No, that's not the criteria. Matthew 22 14 says, Many are called, but few are chosen. Not because God's trying to make it so tough. 
But let's find out what it means. The word called, as you see on your sheet if you've got it there, or you can write it down, is the Greek word kletos, or kletos. The word called means appointed, assigned, and affirmed. So many are called, many are, on God's part of it, appointed, assigned, and affirmed. He made you. He designed you. He, he knows you could do all things in Him. But you have a part of the equation. So to be called in the Greek is kletos, meaning appointed, Assign and affirm. So I'm called, but how am I called? Listen, we're not called by our occupation. We're called by name. Somebody says, I have a calling to be a pastor. No, you're a pastor as a result of your calling. Mm. Say, Dr. Rick, why are you being so technical? Because... If we're going to discover who we are, we've got to That's do it right. God's way, yeah. according to his word. So you say, I'm called to be an apostle. Then the apostle Paul said that. He says, I'm called to be. And in that being, it's expressed through apostleship. So we are called, appointed, assigned, and affirmed by name. God knows my parents gave me the name Richard Lee Kendall. But that was my given name for my physical earth suit. But God gives you a name that describes who you are. And we're in the process of discovering that name. So the name is Onama in the Greek. I'm called by name. Onoma. And a name simply means that's my designation, my identification, are you ready for this? And my DNA. Wow. God doesn't call you by some, I'm not saying, you know, there's some kind of mystical name out there that you've got to discover, but your name that God has given you describes his nature in you. It's not about Rick Kendall. That's just a given name. That's what everybody knows me by in my, in my body. But your name is literally more than a noun. It is, it is your action. It's a verb. It's, it's a noun as well, but, but it describes your nature. We good so far? Yes. Now look at this. I'm called by name. I'm appointed, assigned, and affirmed by my designation, my identification, and my nature or my DNA. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Y'all good? Mm -hmm. And therefore, if I if I will allow God to bring me on my journey into who He called me to be, then I will be chosen. Now, as far as he's concerned, I'm in. But it's whether or not I will agree and participate. I have a choice. So the word chosen is electos, or lactos. You know what word we use? Elected. So chosen or elected means confirmed by the response to the name I'm called. Well, I know this is deep, but are you getting it? Yeah. Let's say it again. I'm called by what? By my name. I'm not called by what I do. I'm called to be a pastor. You're called to be. <laughs> and the result will be what you're doing right now. And you may be a pastor, but then God may actually transition you into new and other areas. Yes. So our purpose remains the same, 
but our journey unfolds it. So I'm called by name. And if I hear the name I'm called by, I'm chosen because, your heart is because I responded. For the assignment. And that makes me elected. Does this make sense? We're good? So our calling comes from God's call. And he calls us by name. So some people would want to say, I wonder what my kingdom name is. Oh. No, it's not, you know, you're not Superman from Krypton, okay? We're not, <laughs> we're not talking about Jor-El or something. <laughs> Jail, appreciate that. But what we're talking about is your name is attached to the purpose that you manifest. And your purpose isn't just what you do. Remember, we said your purpose is who you are. So God may be calling your name and you're missing it. Because you keep responding to the name people called you. Yeah. Mm. And you may think that's who you are. And when God calls you by your name, you look over your shoulder and wonder who he's talking to. I'm talking to you. <laughs> right? Revelation 19.13, I love this, says, His name is called. Say that with me. His name is called. What is it called? The Word of God. Talking about Jesus when he comes back on that stallion. His name is called. His name is called. He's called by his name. What is his name? One of his attributes. One of his attributes is he, he is the Word, capital W, of God. Woo! Now, let me, you know, lest people get bogged down. Before you knew the Lord, hopefully, <laughs> did you ever hear anybody say, oh, here comes trouble? Oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes trouble. Oh. Well, why did they call you that? Because that's the nature you were exhibiting. Exhibiting. <laughs> <laughs> the early or that's what they saw or maybe they were just jealous who knows but I'm saying yeah so they, they had the names for you because that's how they identified you but God it's what's important is what God calls you yes because what he calls you is your name remember to be called is appointed oh hallelujah to be called is assigned to be called is affirmed and I'm called by my name. And the name isn't just what I'm doing right now, although there's an anointing on what I'm doing right now, but I'm, my name is actually my designation, my identification, the nature of God in me that is my DNA. Woo! Amen? Yes, amen? And we need to discover it. Not because we're all caught up in self-centeredness, but because the greater you that you can be, the greater you will be for others in him. Not about you being great, but I'm saying he's great in you. Woo! Hallelujah. His name is called. His name is called the word of God. Your name, your purpose, your nature is how God calls you. But he rarely calls you by your title. He never says to me, hey, Pastor Rick, no. or Dr. Rick. No. He says, son. I'm going, yes. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So we need to hear what he's saying beyond our occupation. He speaks down deep into who we are. So your name is how God calls you, not by your title. Yeah, thank you. Your title is for function. So people can recognize you for what you do. But isn't this true, guys? What have we had so many years of problems with? Ministers who fell because of what they did became more important than who they are. So, number two, what is a good name? I want to leave time so we can go over the test for next week. What is a good name? And where does it come from? 
God's given you a good name. Proverbs 21, I'm sorry, 22 and verse 1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than gold. Hmm. Good name. Write this down if you don't have a sheet there in front of you. Good means complete. You know, we, we say, well, there's good, then there's better, then there's best. But that's not scripturally the way God calls it. When he did creation, he didn't say it is great. He says it is good. Because good means complete. In fact, good is better than best because good is the best. Good is complete. So he's given, given us a good, complete name or character. I am complete in him. Amen. I'm complete before I arrive there. In him. But I am just being refined through the journey. Some feel their name is just a collection or a product of environment and people over time. And so no wonder, you know, if you've got everybody else's code on you, Hallelujah. first of all, they don't fit, right? right. No, and, you know it. and second of all, you're burdened down trying to wear their coat. When God says, no, I've made you righteous linens that fit you. So we have to really understand that you are not a collection of everybody you've met. Amen. You may have thought you were, but you are an original. Now, if you meet the right people that God puts in your company, if you are trained or developed or equipped with uh, God-ordained authority and leadership and that kind of thing that serves, well then you will find some of you in them. But it's not them. You're finding God's will for you through them. Amen? Amen? So, but you don't become them. So God constituted, you've heard me say this before, He constituted you before He instituted you. He blueprinted you before He brought you into the planet. So let me kind of skip some things here so we'll have some time. You can see it on your sheet later on. But, uh, but I want to get to the point here that, I, I've got, that God, I feel, wants me to get to. Some have been copying so long, they have no idea who they are. Now you may say, oh, that's me. Don't condemn yourself. We've all been there. We've all been there. And some of us are still trying to work through it. So the thing is, though, that now you know something. There is a unique you. And you're on a journey of discovery or rediscovery of who that is. When God calls you, don't you want to hear it? A lot of people have fallen because they've married themselves to their ministry instead of being married to God. And then God pours through them ministry. That's a very important point. I hope you really get that tonight. Because some have been copying so long to try to make it look good. So people will think, look, I'm successful and all of that. That actually people have become their God. And they have no idea who they are. So they're a faceless person serving a multitude of gods. And sometimes they're in the ministry. And we have to say, God, help me. He doesn't want to condemn us. He simply says, now you're onto something. Amen? And now I'm going to begin something new inside of you because you see what it is. So many are suffering identity theft, as we said in the beginning. And they can't hear God calling their name. Again, he's not going to call you George or Herbert or Betty or some funny mystical name. He's calling you by the very person that he made you to be. Your name is his nature. And he formed you and fashioned you to be unique, as unique as your fingerprint. Isn't that exciting? If we're getting our worth from who we know, hey, I rub shoulders with them. Yeah. You know, I'm worthwhile. If we're getting our worth from what we have, 
if we're getting our worth from where we've been. You know, I've been to five countries, you know. I, I, you pretty much should follow me. <laughs> if we're getting our worth from a position we've obtained, then we are prime target for identity theft, spiritually. I get have to get my worth completely from God. I have to. He has to say, well done. You know, there's going to be times even your family may not fully appreciate your stand your relatives, and so forth. You have to decide, I want to reach out, I want to love them, I want to help them, I, w I don't want to look like I, I'm all that in a bag of chips, but I, I definitely have to make a stand because I care about what God thinks. It's so important. Note, God allowed Adam, this is what I want to kind of bring us to before we close here. God allowed Adam to name animals in the garden. Yeah, he allowed him to name animals, and that was what they were, what? Oh. Called. In other words, when he named them, they became that. That's how much authority God gave Adam in his stewardship of the garden. And how much knowledge, uh, uh, wisdom. Yeah. Just the uh, natural and in fact, God told him, name the animals, and that's what they'll be called. But when Adam fell into corruption, he lost dominion and allowed things to name and dominate him. But we've been given a new name, a new distinction, as blood-bought kingdom citizens. Jesus became a first fruits of restoration of kingdom dominion. Aren't you excited? Yes. So no two fingerprints are the same. And the same is true concerning your distinctive kingdom identity. And you know what? Our journey is a, is a process of discovery. What it is. What it is. <laughs> Amen? You are an original, Dorothy. You're an original, Paula. You're an original, Liz. You're an original, Rick. You're an original out there. God has made you that so that you can discover his purpose for you on the planet. And our journey is a, par a process of uncovering and unfolding what that is. Wow. We are a snapshot of the kingdom yes. that is coming. I like that. You know what I am? I am a manifestation of thy will be done. Yes. yes. On earth as it is in heaven. Now let me do this very quickly. I hope this is a blessing tonight. Amen. I want to go over the test that we're going to have next week. I'm going to give you the answers to the test next week. Here it is. Ten questions next week. Now I'm giving you the answers. Next week the books will be closed. The sheets will be put away. Nobody can look at their notes. So I'm giving you the answers tonight. So that you can rehearse this. Number one. In Eden, Adam and Eve trespassed by taking ownership instead of stewardship. The next question next week will involve this. Purpose is who I am. Passion is a hint of purpose. Vision is why I am. Mission is what I do. That will be put in the form of either true or false, multiple choice, fill in the blank. Each question will be worth 10 points, so all of you can get 100 on this test. Number three, answer to the question of next week's test. The biblical word for protocol is pro through to his call or order. Number four, a path is designed to direct the feet or literally called our DNA. Number five, a revelation is really just an introduction to another mystery. Remember that when we covered that in class? These are questions all over the, the last 11 weeks. Number six, four measures of power, character, stature, office, and assignment. Number seven, the stature of Christ is maturity into who 
you were formed to be and are now becoming. That will be put in the form of true or false or multiple choice and so forth. Number eight, we are born with the DNA of honor, but it takes process to become honorable. You ought to read the questions carefully next week because I've been known to try to trick you. But I love you. But I want to see if we're paying attention. Number nine, prayer in the Greek is prosuk or forward thinking or prophetic word. It's an interconnecting two-way conference call. And then number ten, we are called kletos by name and chosen, elected by response to the name we're called. Those are the ten answers. And next week we will have the ten questions. And as we always say, what guys? To the, to the king. king.